Hey guys, this is a quick video looking at uh, some of the technical differences uh, between Bitwig and Reaper and Ableton when it comes to automation um, from a code standpoint. So if you're a uh, adventurous juice programmer and you want to see um, the differences and when you have to use like begin and end change gesture messages and stuff, um, continue. Uh, so where did this come from? This is Bitwig Studio, um, one of my favorite DAWs. I think they do a lot of things better than Ableton. Um, but uh, automation is not one of them, and I'll show you why. Uh, you'll notice here, this is a plugin of mine that works with turntables. And if I scratch, this is a parameter it's right down here, and you can see it moving, right? Uh, however, I've got it mapped in this case. It's reacting to a platter. And if I move it, you see it's uh, moving, but it is not. The parameter is not moving at all. So I didn't know why this would be, uh, and I had to kind of take a take a deep look to figure it out uh, last night. Same thing in Reaper, there's some weirdness, so we're gonna get to that um, rather quickly. Okay, so here's the test. Um, we're gonna take a parameter and automate it internally. This is inside the process block. I am setting begin change gesture, which you're not supposed to set more than once, but it's fine for this test. We're gonna set, tell it we're gesturing, and then we're gonna move the parameter and we're gonna take a look and see how the DAWs react to that first, and then we're gonna tweak some things. So, here it is in Ableton, do that one first. And in Ableton, you can see right away, once we start up, here's the scratch parameter, moving in a sine wave, as we would expect. Uh, if I hit record on the automation, it turns red because it is recording. Here it is, let's take a look. Um, very detailed sine wave which is what we want. Yeah, as you can see, that's actually way more automation points um, than I wanna try to deal with uh, when editing, but that's okay. Now, interestingly, uh, Ableton doesn't care if we do this begin change message, begin change gesture message. If I get rid of this, okay, here it is now with without sending a begin message. Of course, it's moving. That's what we'd expect. Uh, if we hit record, does it record? It does record. Show automation, here you go, same thing. Uh, it's overwriting, that's the old one, but you'll see as it continues here. Same sine wave, just as many points, just as good. Ableton doesn't care if you send begin and end change gesture messages, <laughs> which is strange, uh, but this kind of explains why Ableton only has one automation mode, right? You'll notice that Reaper has several automation modes, five. Uh, Bitwig has three because it reacts differently to the begin and end messages depending on which mode you are in. Um, okay, so taking a look next at Reaper. Okay, so here we are in Reaper. And as you can see, we start up and you can see the sine wave moving the parameter. If I hit record uh, at the moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. If I hit record, uh, it is recording the sine wave. It's getting some odd little spikes though, which is a problem here. It missed a bunch of them. Uh, the reason for this, uh, well, or the thing that's going on here is I have not uh, begun change gesture. This is the same thing we were doing with Ableton a minute ago. Ableton doesn't care about change, change gestures. Um, Bitwig does, and you'll note, or uh, excuse me, Reaper does, and you'll notice I'm recording, but this didn't turn red. So Reaper has this nice feature where if it thinks you're automating, it'll turn red like that. So I already know that if I put the mouse down, it's gonna send that change gesture. So as you can see, it doesn't think it's automating because it's not red. And this is because Reaper expects the message starting and stopping, begin and end change gesture to come in on the message thread. And this is not on the message thread. Uh, I said when we started, this is right inside the process block. So it's causing this problem. Uh, when I do mouse down over here, I just happen to know I'm sending sending it through the message thread and you see what happens. Same thing with the MIDI controller, by the way. Uh, if I do that, it starts and stops automation, which is great. Uh, we can change that because we have five modes, you remember, in Reaper for automation. We're not going to go through all of them, but right now doesn't seem to care where it gets the change gesture from. Uh, so as this is moving up and down, it now is recording automation. If we hit record to actually get a look at it. Oh, well, it's still a mess. Okay, so these are, maybe this messiness has to do more with the fact that I'm recording this video than anything else. Uh, but not ideal, not great sine waves. 
looked better in Ableton, if we're honest. So, okay, stopping this, um, I wanna show you one other thing too. Watch what happens when I close the UI. In write mode, we're fine. It still thinks it's automating. Ah, but if I hit record, it doesn't work. Why? Something about closing the UI makes it so that the send value messages are apparently not received or disregarded, even if it knows that it's gesturing and sees the values, it just doesn't bother to record them. Uh, let me try it in touch mode just to show you, but it's the same. In touch mode, we lose automation. As soon as I move it to touch mode, it uh, turns it off. But even if we had automation, you can see it's moving, but if I hit record, we're all good. As soon as I close the UI, stops recording. So annoyingly, Reaper ignores automation whenever the plugin UI is closed. So if you have like a sequencer, <clears throat> sequencer or something that's sending automation data on its own, you have to have the UI open. Okay, now let's try Bitwig. Here we are in Bitwig, and you'll notice right away that there's something different. The scratch parameter is not even moving in Bitwig. Uh, it is, we know, setting the change gesture and sending uh, value updates, and it's that's being completely disregarded by Bitwig. If I go mouse down and move this, you'll see it move. Uh, if I, here's uh, the three uh, automation modes. I'm gonna put it in touch. Uh, if I record automation and do this, uh, we, well, hang on, it's not visible. There, uh, we get it through the mouse. However, if I record automation coming from the MIDI controller, I get nothing. Despite the fact that I see it moving, the two little red dots up here mean that it's automating. I know it's automating here and doing a sine wave. Uh, if I do mouse down, I can see the sine wave. I can see it moving, but it's not recording. So what is going on? Why doesn't Bitwig like this? Well, we said earlier that uh, Reaper, for example, and some other DAWs ignore begin and end change gestures uh, if they're not on the message thread, if they're coming through the audio thread uh, or other threads. Bitwig does that as well. And additionally, it seems to ignore the set value notifying host message if that doesn't come on the message thread. So watch this. We're gonna do something, which by the way, don't. this is not good production code. You don't wanna do most of this stuff uh, on an actual release plugin for reasons that are not gonna go into. Um, but let's do this, right? Message manager, call asynchronous, change message, and uh, set value. And if I do this, this will create a constant stream of begin change message, do the sine wave, uh, but it'll be on the message thread now. So we should get something similar to what we got at the very beginning of this video in Ableton, where we see a sine wave. Okay, this time we started up much different result. I see the scratch moving right away. I'm going to put it in touch mode. Uh, let's view the scratch. Yeah, you can see it. Color coding's not great here. They ought to make this darker because you can barely see it moving up and down there. Uh, but if I start recording, there it is. Not bad. You will notice, here's, here's we're fighting it. Now we're setting <laughs> too many values. Um, but you'll notice that this uh, is not as good, right? There's all these little flat areas. So it's not as good as what we got in Ableton. In Ableton, we got more automation data than was comfortable, uh, more than we could easily use. In Bitwig, we get the same value for too long. Why is this? This is because this is actually moving a lot slower, even though it doesn't look like it, because everything's going on the message thread. Message thread is a slower, it's a lower priority thread. Uh, and every once in a while it triggers a change and it updates the sine wave, but not as often as if that message is happening every single time on the uh, in the audio thread, which we don't want to do for other reasons, but nonetheless. Uh, so this means we have to rewrite. If you have a plugin that does any sort of automation, which is not coming through the UI, is not mouse-based, uh, if you have parameters that automate like this, that do sine waves internally or a sequencer that... Uh, internally triggers things uh, in for various reasons, then, and you want that parameter automation to be written out to the DAW, it has to be sent 
on the message thread and not just the uh, begin and end change message gesture message <laughs> but the uh, but all of the value changes as well uh, if you want it to work in all DAWs I think the best thing to do right now is to send everything out uh, on the message manager which means it's going to be slower like this data that we're looking at uh, there might be a way you can do both or uh, have a switch so that some DAWs you send it out synchronously or closer to synchronously and you send it out on DAWs like Bitwig in this slower manner. I'm not totally sure. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's the results of this kind of deep dive. They're all a little screwy and all a little different. Have a good one.